When searching bodybuilding on Wikipedia, the term is defined as the use of progressive resistance exercise to control and develop one's muscles by muscle hypertrophy for aesthetic purposes. It is distinct from similar activities such as powerlifting because it focuses on physical appearance instead of strength. An individual who engages in this activity is referred to as a bodybuilder. Perhaps a familiar definition, as most who picture bodybuilding likely envision this. And this. And maybe even this. <laughs> But what if I told you that the first ever bodybuilding competition was about more than big muscles and aesthetics? Well, ready or not, I'ma tell you about it. In 1901, physical culture pioneer Eugene Sandow held the first ever bodybuilding competition in foggy old London. But the show was not simply about physique, but also about how that physique could perform. Wrestling, fencing, and other physical displays were paramount to the showcase. Athleticism was on full display at the great competition. Sandow himself was a physical specimen, to say the least, as he had a physique that could be backed by incredible feats, such as allegedly battling a lion. <laughs> now, competitive bodybuilding is a much more focused version of its origin. Seen by many as a pageant as opposed to a sport, these endeavors are more about displaying the muscles that allow our bodies to move and be athletic. These muscles are displayed via growing the tissues as a result of how you train and eat, as well as reducing body fat, also resulting from how you train and eat. This allows for the best visuals, enlightening spectators with the human anatomy at its most developed. You know those back muscles that allow you to pull your body to climb a mountain? This is what they look like at their most developed. How about those core muscles that allow you to punch or swing a baseball bat? Here's what they look like. Triceps for shooting a basketball? Boom! Quads for sprinting at full speed? Wow. And that ass that won't quit? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what they look like. From a certain point of view, bodybuilding literally celebrates what our musculature has to offer. Most people trying to get fit have general goals of improving body composition. We've seen this time and time again with body transformation testimonials galore. I believe this is because we are visual creatures, and seeing a built physique implies strength and vitality something that most, if not all, desire. The look that suggests hard work. But look-based goals are typically seen as vain above all else. But I will argue that body composition is a very important signifier of health and fitness. Homer, this is a new body fat analysis test. I start you jiggling and measure how long it takes to stop. Woohoo! Look at that blubber fly! To simplify things, Physical fitness can be broken down into five categories or pillars. Muscular strength, muscular endurance, cardiovascular endurance, flexibility and mobility, and body composition. Most fitness activities and athletic endeavors involve some combination of the first four pillars, with body composition being the byproduct. In other words, your body composition will be reflected by your activity and overall lifestyle. <laughs> But when it comes to competitive bodybuilding as we know it, this byproduct is the main point. To manipulate body composition, you can increase the size of your muscles by using a wide array of strategies, all of which involving training with resistance or some sort of opposing force. This force can be your body weight against an immovable object such as the ground when running or doing push-ups, water when doing your best impression of a boat, or even another human being, as with wrestling. <laughs> But resistance training is most traditionally seen as training with resistance in the form of weights, barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, machines, and so on. When it comes to competitive bodybuilding, these are the modalities by which most strategies are constructed. Bodybuilding legends Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler both had different approaches to building some of the biggest muscles in the biz. With Coleman known for bringing the intensity with the heaviest of weights to stretch and squeeze his contractile tissues, while Cutler was known as more of a volume trainer, riddling his muscles with metaphorical bullets only to be rebuilt with sufficient rest and nutrition. As the saying goes, there are a variety of ways to skin that old cat. And when it comes to building a body, many weights, rep ranges, sets, and tempos can and will work. 
Some bodybuilders' regimens use certain ideas found in powerlifting to build their physique, but calisthenics can also work. A bodybuilder's tool belt should be vast, as the goal is to find the most optimal means of making the muscles bigger, while also considering shape and symmetry. Again, a simplified means of using complex resistance training methods to build a very specific looking kind of body. The body will be reflected by the training. But essentially every athletic endeavor requires resistance training to fully optimize the goal. And I'm talking about the full gamut of resistance training efforts, including with traditional weights. And of course, these efforts will build a specific body. Whether a runner, a biker, a swimmer, skier, fighter, rock climber, powerlifter, crossfitter, calisthenics athlete, football player, basketball player, you get the point. Your body will reflect your training, and building a specific body that supports your sport is crucial. This is not to say that every sport or athletic endeavor benefits from having the most muscle mass. Not at all. That will vary greatly. But all sports use resistance training to further a goal and develop the muscles in some way that supports that goal. We're trying to adapt to a stressor which allows for greater performance going forward, regardless of whether or not body composition is the byproduct or the primary purpose. In many ways, this video is meant to be a celebration of fitness, using bodybuilding to frame that celebration and claim that it is in fact the foundation of fitness and athletics. But that does not necessarily mean that it should be the sole purpose. What I love about building a body at its purest state and barest bones is that it teaches us how to train as well as eat to be a stronger, more durable, and overall healthier individual, assuming that drugs stay out of the picture and expectations are realistic. As someone who considers himself a fitness fanatic and an artist, I love bodybuilding as a sport as well as an art. But this is just one area of fitness, and there is great value in maximizing as much of a body as you can. Training with the five pillars in mind is perhaps the best way to be well-rounded in fitness. But build the body that you want, assuming that it leaves you happy and healthy. If you enjoyed these thoughts and edits, let me know by leaving me a like, a comment, and a hey, maybe even subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.